Oh, what's up, my friends? Day four here, I guess, on my trip. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think day four, yeah. So I'm still in the uh, I'm s south of Providence, Rhode Island. I went back and stayed where I did last, the night before last. Um, just got a shower here, Planet Fitness, and I'll tell you. <laughs> I asked the guy, I said, y'all have any problems with the hot water situation here? He goes, no, it's the first I've ever heard of it. I'm like, golly, I had good run of hot water, and I'm going. All of a sudden, it went ice cold. Whoo! So I had, to, I had to endure the rest of my shower in cold water. But, I mean, hey, at least it wasn't, you know, freezing temps in the wintertime. That would have probably added major insult to injury. So, anyway... I'm gonna run to uh, to Panera Bread and get some coffee, and we'll sit down and we'll do a little work, and then we're gonna head up to the Portland, Maine area. We're gonna hang out in Maine for a couple days before I head to to the ferry up to uh, Nova Scotia. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna get it done. It's gonna be uh, pretty cool. some music done some stuff it's a little pro productive here this morning i am fixing to head up to the boston area now i've got some options I don't, i'm not going to boston i'm going through boston to maine is where i'm going I don't feel like really stopping in boston um but i'll go around it i've got options of whether i want to take 95 and cut across and hit one all the way up through like i did in 2021 go through kittery and New Hampshire, the back roads are such a great drive. I love that drive. Or I just stay on 95 and go straight up to Portland, which is only a couple hours. It's a little over two hours. It's an hour, I think, and a half from here to Boston. I mean, we're all, listen, you can get anywhere in New England pretty quickly in most cases. It doesn't take much to, to get through New England. You can, you can pretty much see New England in a few days if you really wanted to, you know, unless you just wanted to spend a bunch of time in one place, and, you know, there's a lot of places that really aren't, like, you don't feel like you really want to stay there long, I mean, a good day hanging out, seeing it is fun, like I did yesterday in Providence, Rhode Island, but I haven't seen Portland, Portland, Maine is not a big area, it's certainly not as big as Portland, Oregon, uh, but it's, uh, I guess it's about 68, 70,000 people that live there. Um, be interesting to go see it. I mean, someone's like, well, if you're going to get a lobster roll, get it in Portland, Oregon. I'm like, you know, I had the whole lobster roll thing in 2021, and I can't eat the bread. Uh, the one I had in Bar Harbor wasn't real impressive. I wasn't impressed by it for some reason. I don't know what it is. I guess it was a new tourist or company wanting a lobster roll. I mean, maybe I just don't have a taste for it. I don't know. It was good. The lobster itself was good. I'm not a real huge lobster fan, but I've had good lobster, and then I've had lobster that I just was like, I don't know if I like lobster. So it's a mixed bag of opinion for me on lobster. I like it if it's good, I guess. However, you slice that one, hell, I don't know. And maybe it's just sometimes it's good sometimes it isn't you know I, I really don't know but uh still good to maybe go see portland change it up a little bit and see what the local fair is all about i uh, i've driven past it through it but not to it so that's what we're going to do here today and we're going to kind of hang out in maine for a couple of days here before we get on the uh ferry tuesday to go to nova scotia it's going to be cool we're gonna do this, folks. Downtown Boston, going to the tunnel and over the bridge. So I've just kind of made a decision here. I mean, I'm just gonna take it easy a little bit. I mean, nothing wrong with doing that, taking this trip. You know, it's either one or the other, but uh, love the Honda Element, don't get me wrong, love it. I think it's cool as hell. And I'll be staying in it, you know, uh, from time to time on the trip on the way home and stuff. But I just kind of said, you know, I'm going to stay in a hotel for a couple of nights here in Maine before I go to to uh, Canada. 
and not knowing what I'm going into, I'm not getting in there until it's dark. Uh, on a Tuesday, I'm just staying at a at a Hilton up there, a true Hilton hotel. Um, and then I'll kind of feel it out that day to see if I want to stay anywhere else. But I think that's might just stay both nights. Um, I love the Honda Element. Don't get me wrong. I think it's cool and all, but I'm going to be honest, it's small. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I think it's cool that I took this trip in it to see what it'll do. I think it's the whole point of it. Um, but man, you know, it just, you know, it gets me is that a lot of these guys, they, they build these elements out, but they have to compromise the front passenger seat for the bed. And that's just, why are you going to compromise a passenger seat? Well, say, say if two people wanted to travel in it. Now, some guys can do it. They have those foldable beds where they fold it back and convert it and they can do the seat and that's fine. But it's a little small. I think what I'm going to do is eventually probably just, I'll sell it, you know, down the road here. I love the car though. It's really cool. Uh, it's just uh, getting in and out of the back of that thing, you know. I'm not as young as I used to be. I can do it, but it's like, okay, I get it. And the thing is, is, once you've been in an RV or in a van, you've converted, you can stand up and walk around and you built it like your house and your bed is just like at the house. It's your, it's, it's your home. It's a comfortable bed and there are all your amenities there and everything's there. It's hard to go to something so small and extreme and do that. It really is. But uh, I love it. You know, I think it's cool. I slept two nights in it over here in, uh, pro outside of Providence, uh, Rhode Island, in a really quiet area there. It was really nice loved it uh on the way back home i will probably stay there and then i will pick uh another place on the way back uh may on the way back be stopping by a friend of mine's for a day or two on the way home so we'll see i've got time you know i've got i'm gonna be back there september 13th or 14th back home so we'll because uh, i need to be home for a day or two before i get back to crank in the week of the 16th and then that next week I fly out from my production music conference in Los Angeles. So it's kind of an off month, but September is what it is. So it's pretty cool. So other than that, we're going to see what we can get into tomorrow. I'm hanging out in a really cool town here in, Ma in Maine, uh, just south of Bangor called Waterville. It's actually a pretty cool town. Um, I'm going to go explore around it tomorrow, and I may go up to Bangor a little bit. And I drove through... Uh, I drove through Portland a little bit today. It was cool, very beautiful city, very clean. And I may go hang out down in Portland a little bit. Thing is, is if if I don't go back down there, I can hit it on the way back. So it's kind of cool. We'll do that. Um, they got a cruise terminal. I tried to. I think I said it earlier. I, I may stop in in Boston, but I went through downtown Boston today. I was driving around and Labor Day, man. It was so packed. All those people. I wanted to stop. I couldn't get any parking anywhere. I wanted to stop and go see the the uh, shipyard and the naval, like the, the USS uh, Constitution. I wanted to go see all that stuff. It was kind of cool, but uh, just couldn't do it. No, because yeah, you know, the cool thing is there's another time. That's the cool thing is don't want to hit it all at the same trip we can always go back so that's a cool thing so um no disappointment i mean boston was driving around boston it's some of those right downtown gave me like driving in new york feeling but i've never driven in new york i've seen the, the cars and walked down the street so it kind of gave me that vibe but nowhere near as big but uh it's boston that's for sure so it took me forever to get out of boston if i had just stayed on 93 and went when I went through the tunnel, went over the bridge and went on out, I would have been okay. But I wanted to hit Highway 1 and drive a part that I didn't drive going into Portsmouth. Because the last time in 2021, I took 93 and I got on Highway 1 just before Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And Portsmouth, New Hampshire is cool, man. If you go look at my video when I'm over there, I didn't stop in Portsmouth. But that bridge coming out of Portsmouth crosses to Kittery, Maine. It's so cool. I'd love to see that thing go up, man, it's where the ships from the Naval Yard, Naval Shipyard come out. And you can tell the, the bridge is built by the Army Corps of Engineers, by a military. And it goes out, and I think it's either on their bypass or on 95. There's a bridge that when the ships go out, they raise it, and they stop traffic. So I'm not sure, but I'd have to sail 95. Uh, if I go back home that way, I'll know it for sure. I'll hit 95 and, uh, and see, but... Uh, pretty cool man the stuff you see it really is so we'll see what we get in tomorrow i guess it'd be day five be cool what's up my friends today i am in waterville maine um been here before i was here a few years ago 
and funny thing is i was talking about back then i'm looking for some coffee looking for a local place and you know you don't see a lot of them you don't realize that it's a it's a regional chain and i was like yeah i found this place called aroma joe's and well they're local and i'm gonna hit them but that was a chain <laughs> <laughs> People watching that video are going, dude, that's not local. That's not local. But it is local, I guess, in the region of about two or three states because I didn't see any Aroma Joe's coffees till I got to New England. But uh, well, there is a local coffee shop we are hitting here in town called the Coffee House. So that's about as local as it's going to get. So not that Aroma Joe's was bad. Actually, it was a good cup of coffee. I can't complain. I mean, hell, I like damn dunkin donuts dude i'm good with that i just won't drink starbucks unless i have to it's just overpriced cup of eight o'clock coffee at walmart's about all that is um but we're just hanging here today like i said i got a hotel room for a couple days before i go tomorrow to uh to the the ferry to go up to nova scotia canada so we're gonna we're gonna adventure around Canada and we're going to do that so I'm going to get me a cup of coffee and we'll see what I can get into here today because I'm just hanging out here today I was doing some music this morning and hanging at the hotel got me some hotel coffee which I don't know if it's Folgers or another brand it was not a bad cup of coffee I mean they were as nice as they could be last night and they didn't have any more decaf and she brewed a pot and I thought it was cool I was like poor no one else is probably going to drink the pot the rest of the night but um came in for breakfast it was pretty good at the hotel i just all i got was a little bit of sausage and some eggs i can't eat all that dang oatmeal and bagels and cereals and just all that stuff it just wreak havoc on you dude all those grains and those carbs and this the cereals are not good for you those breakfast cereals it's waffles as good as they are it's like crack rock i can't eat them they will uh they'll mess with you man they really will they'll wreak havoc on your health but be it that it may, I'm going to go in here and get a cup of coffee. And let's see how this uh, how this place rates. I think it'd be pretty good. Most of these places like this are really good. Pretty cool. So, well, if you're in, ever in Waterville, Maine, it's called the Coffee House. It's on Main Street in Waterville. Yeah, you can't get any more local than this. And this is... Uh, one of your classic New England hippie coffee shops. It's about as hippie as it gets. <laughs> yes, sir, buddy. They are a trip. But I'll tell you, these guys source their coffee out of Hawaii. And, uh, you know, when you go to these local places, they take it seriously. It's not like they just, when they brew it once, they just put the decaf in, pour a little half and half, and go with it. Man, I don't know what they did. There's a little process of... I said, some creamer, a decaf, Americana style, whatever. I just, because that just seemed to be the good thing to do. I don't know what the hell. Americana must be like a light roast or something. I don't really know. I'm not that coffee connoisseur snob to know everything about coffee. Coffee is coffee to me. But I do like a good local or good well-made cup of coffee sometimes because I'll tell you, uh, there is a lot to be said for that. And I will say that you can tell a big difference between Dunkin' Donuts coffee and Starbucks all day long. Dunkin's better. You can, people will argue that's okay. I'll tell you another company. They're out of Canada, but they're up north. Here's called Tim Hortons. They're really good. Gotta give it. That's a good cup of coffee, and their donuts are good, but too bad I can't really eat them. Occasionally have one, but one equals two, three equals four, four, you know, it goes on and on. Before you know it, I had a dozen donuts, and I'm not doing so well. So the cups here, these are nuts. These are, the, the cups are, are absolutely nuts. Check this out. You ever seen a coffee cup like this? It looks like uh, came out of a, an Asian grocery store or some sort of a Chinese food place. <laughs> Chinese coffee cup, as you will, that folds the flap down like you're getting some shrimp fried rice or something there, but it's a cup of coffee. And she goes, well, it's not plastic and it's biodegradable. I'm like, okay, I get it, you know. Some of these folks that are all about, we hate plastic, we hate paper. You remember when they used to hate paper and they went to plastic? Now they hate plastic and they're going to paper. People are a trip. So it's like, okay, well, the turtles eat it. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I, I understand it. You know, totally get it. It's not good to just be littering things with that. Um, if it breaks down and it's degradable, I'm all about that. It's okay. That's quite all right. But uh, it's one of those things that's like, okay, well, if the straw's paper, but the top and the cup's plastic. Uh, that ain't making any sense. You ain't used your brain. Because if you don't think the turtle's going to eat the cup or the top, 
think guys common sense folks so i gotta give them credit it's all paper if that's what they want to do we're gonna try this and see this is a fresh hot cup of coffee that's for sure pretty good um i put my stevia in there they were okay with that i mean they let you just squirt it right in the cup when they, before they make it or right after so pretty good cup so Anyway, I'm going to see what I'm going to get into here today and just ride around and explore. I'll probably go up to Bangor. You know, uh, in Bangor, they said uh, Stephen King lives in Bangor's house. I'm not a big Stephen King fan, but they said that house is pretty wild. You can look on YouTube and people have driven past it, gawking at it. All these Stephen King fans gawking at his house. It uh, He's a trip, man. The guy's, he's out there a little bit. He's his own person. So, But that's who he is. We're all different. So let me see what we can get into today. Don't think I'm going to backtrack to Portland today. On the way back in from Canada, I do. I'm going to go over to um, going to go over to Stowe, Vermont, and that area in Littleton, New Hampshire. And I think I mentioned why I'm going to go to Stowe, Vermont, because there's a coffee shop there for some YouTubers that I follow called the Nomadic Movement. You, some of you may follow them. They started. I started following them when they were traveling with that Trenton Alley and. I look at these channels like, why am I still watching these? It's not about travel or RV, but it's like their own reality shows. I guess it's the personalities or the things. I mean, they're the nicest people, but yeah, they've made a ton of money on YouTube. And I mean to tell you, I know Trent now is making a freaking fortune of money. They're doing it because I don't know the money it's cost them to build this house. And they bought another home and all this stuff that they do. You know, there's money coming in. Can't pay for it with looks and rainbows and skittles because if you could man that'd be great it'd be awesome but anyway i'm gonna jump off here and see what i can get in here today so we get into something cool it'll be awesome uh, you know i'll cut you in and we'll see you then all right so uh, walking the park here in waterville it's like an old bridge This is the Kennebec River. This bridge is swaying and swinging, man. It's a pedestrian bridge with bicycles. It's a bridge, I guess. That cable is attached to this bridge. All the way to the land. Oh, I guess keeping it from swaying. That's crazy, because this thing is swaying. <laughs> Good gosh, it's an old bridge. So Waterville has a little water, river walk park here. It's pretty cool. And I'll tell you, that old bridge, it's called the Two Cent Bridge. It was a toll bridge, people to walk across from the town across the way, which is Winslow. And uh, I guess currently there's about between three or four towns. I think Fairfield, there's another town, and then Winslow, and then Waterville. It's probably about 20,000 people, but man, how times have changed. You start looking at that. The history that I was showing you in the video, you can stop it and read it. It shows the old toll keepers and floods in the 1800s that almost took the whole bridge completely away. And uh, that's amazing how far back. You see a photo of 1869 or something like that. It's crazy. It's beautiful up here. I'll tell you the weather 70 degrees, sunny and breezy. Man, where I live in Charleston, it's 105 degrees with 85% humidity. It's good to get out of town and get away from that for a while. It's so nice here. This is what I wish it was all year round down south. It's not quite that. But um, it's uh, this is what they call the Kennebec River. It's really pretty. It has uh, quite a few rivers that are in Maine. But uh, just one corner of it. It's pretty cool. So I've just been hanging out all day, wandering around. Not much. I didn't go far. I didn't go up into Bangor because I'm going through there tomorrow, and I'm be coming back through there when I come back from Canada, from Bar Harbor, um, and I'll go back through Portland on the way back. 
Um, I definitely want to go over to Stowe, Vermont, as I said earlier. I want to do that and do Littleton, New Hampshire. It's so beautiful over there. Like I said, I've just been doing some music, just chilling out, wandering around. I went driving around the little town of Waterville. There's a lot of little towns are all joined at the hip here. It's, I guess about 20,000 people in this area. Uh, not a bad town. I just, uh, just went and got something to eat at a restaurant called Governor's Restaurant and Bakery. If you're from Maine, chime in on that one. Let me know what you think of that. I thought it was pretty good. The burger it had a, just the patty. I can't eat the bread for the moose burger. I had a side salad. And I said, well, let me try the little, little tiny cup of their clam chowder. It was pretty good. Now, I know some folks from Maine would go, that's not the best clam chowder you get in Maine. Well, maybe not, but it was good. It's, uh, I get a pretty good clam chowder at home in Charleston, South Carolina, but it's the way people make it up here in New England that makes the difference more so. so. I'm sure you can get it in different places up here in New England really good. But, uh, hey, when in Rome, as they always say, they had a lobster roll, but I wasn't getting that. I already had my share of a lobster roll in Bar Harbor three years ago, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't make me jump for joy and go, this is the best thing I've ever had, lobster roll. Now, mind you, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm sure there are great lobster rolls out there. Wonderful. You know, it's all in the lobster and maybe the roll, but when you just put a generic hot dog roll on there and just throw what you figure is lobster, I guess it is, and uh, hope that it's good. If you don't know any better, you think, well, that's it. <laughs> so I may need to eat a really good, you know, lobster roll somewhere else, you know, so we'll see. They say down in Portland, there's some places that they claim that you can get the best lobster roll in Portland, Maine down here, south of me, so I don't know. I'll keep that in mind on my way back down, so we'll see. Other than that, I'm going to sit down, chill out some more music, and chill out. And in the morning, we're going to get up, do our thing, and uh, fill my tank up with gas, and we're going to head up to Bar Harbor. We'll hang out there for a little bit before we get on the ferry. It'll be pretty cool. And uh, other than that, all is well.